Hi, this is Bitluni and it's time for a new MIDI synthesizer. Today we get a refresher on MIDI and how a simple synthesizer works. At the end we even add an arpeggiator that helps non-musicians like me creating basic melodic sequences. While China is shut down and all my hardware projects are on hold, I felt like making a new synthesizer. It's not an hardware synth like from Look Mom No Computer, but an Arduino based software synth, so more like Look Mom Yes Computer. Let's start with an overview what even MIDI is before we start with the actual synth. MIDI is a musical instrument digital interface developed in the early 80s. It still rules the world to date since it's so simple yet effective by transmitting only the note numbers, key velocities and controller values, not actual sound. This way MIDI devices like this simply provide the keys and controls. The actual sound is created by the Digital Audio Workstation, aka a program on your computer. This gives you the freedom of designing the sound while the input device is kept simple without any actual sound generation. The original interface uses simple UART at 31250 baud from these ancient DIN connectors. UART is also used for Arduino devices as the serial interface. I own a few MIDI devices and most of these lack the DIN connectors because of the size. They however provide MIDI over USB. As you've seen in my recent videos, I was playing with this USB host controller. One of my goals tinkering with that was also to get a MIDI USB driver for my projects. With my development board here I started to analyze the descriptors and translating the USB MIDI packets to a legacy UART MIDI stream like it's coming from the old DIN connectors. My experimental ESP32 board is good enough to develop the software synth, but I started to design actual synth boards on my live streams on the Trash channel. But at the moment any production in China is limited. If you can't wait to build your own MIDI synth, check out my super old series based on the DIN connector and an Arduino Mega. For now let's just start with some synthesizer basics. Everything starts with a keystroke. Whenever something changes on this device, the MIDI interface sends a short message. In this case it's note on with the channel, note number and velocity. The message is only 3 bytes short. When the key is released again, we get a note off message with the channel, note number and velocity. So now we know whenever a note is active. We can represent this with a simple signal. For analog synthesizers this would be the control voltage or gate. But this isn't a sound yet, it's just saying here should be a sound. The actual perceivable sound is created by an oscillator. Oscillators are vibrating at specified frequencies and can have different shapes. The simplest oscillator is the square wave, which we will start with. From MIDI we got the note number, which represents a specific frequency. So let's connect this with the oscillator. The gate can be used to enable or disable the oscillator output. This is the waveform we get. Isn't that cool? On analog synthesizers, the oscillator frequency is controlled by a voltage. You will often see the abbreviation VCO for Voltage Controlled Oscillator. Working with precise MIDI note numbers makes things a bit easier. So that's it. This is already a simple synthesizer. Done. Okay, there is a bit more. Usually you want to be able to play multiple notes at once. This is called polyphony. To get polyphony we have to maintain a list of all notes active in our synth. For each of these notes we generate a waveform and add them up. This is the resulting master waveform. But let's not forget about the velocity. We can express the velocity as the volume of the sound that is played. The harder we hit the key, the louder it should be. The volume is represented by the amplitude of the waveform. 
The oscillator generates a normalized amplitude of 1 around 0. To modify the amplitude of that waveform, we only need to multiply it with the target amplitude. We take maximum velocity as 1 and absolute silence as 0. On analog synthesizers, this would be represented by the voltage level of the gate. This multiplication of the waveform would be called voltage controlled amplifier. Let's take a look at the result. Cool, now we can finally express ourselves. Okay, enough. If you look at these convoluted analog synthesizer walls, you always see these jumper cables. These are used to connect the individual modules with controlling voltages and transport the waveform through different filters. Although we probably don't want to reflect this complete freedom in our software synth, we still should keep it modular. The first thing to try is to plug in a different oscillator. Other basic oscillators are the sine wave, the sawtooth or the triangle. Each has its own characteristic sound. This way we already get the freedom to pick from different basic instruments. Sine wave. Sawtooth. Triangle Square Wave Let's bring in even more modularity. For now the control voltage has a really simple shape. How about we plug something in between to modify our instrument. For example when we release the key we would like to fade out the sound. We simply would need to change the shape like this so the amplitude is ramped down even though the key is already released. This shaping of the voltage is called envelope. The most common envelope is ADSR. That stands for its parameters attack, decay, sustain and release. Attack, decay and release are durations. Sustain is the amplitude for the remaining portion of the gate while the key is held down. We could pre-configure these parameters or we can utilize MIDI controller change messages to adjust them. Let's take a look. This is the attack. This is the decay. This is the sustain. And this is the release. That's already quite something to digest. Let's take a look at one last thing that really helps unskilled people like me. It's the arpeggiator. An arpeggiator is a filter that generates a short sequence based on the currently active nodes. We can plug it in as a global filter on the control voltages of the active nodes. It will loop through the nodes at a specific rate and generate new gates with a specific duration. Let's take a look. I hold down some nodes that sound good in my ears and it perfectly times it for me. This sustain button also sends a simple MIDI controller message. I take it to toggle a mode where all note off messages are ignored. So the synth thinks these keys are still pressed down. Now we can use more controllers to change the arpeggiator parameters. Like the rate. The duration. Or even pitch. How cool is that? I hope that wasn't too overwhelming for the first part. It should at least give you an overview of what to look for. And 
In the next one we will cover low frequency oscillators and some other filters. I will also continue to develop a nice hardware for the synthesizer and a simple sequencer that uses all the buttons and LEDs of this MIDI device here. Subscribe to not miss it and I hope to see you next time. Bye!